Hello, I'm Chris from TechSpert, and this bad boy right here is the Oppo Find X3 Lite, the most affordable of Oppo's fresh new Find X3 trio. It'll be hitting the UK on April the 14th for 379 quid, and it's come along at a perfect time to take on Samsung's fresh new Galaxy A52 5G. In fact, the Find X3 Lite sports very similar specs, including an OLED screen, 64 megapixel primary camera, and of course those 5G chops. So enough of me yammering, let's whip the Oppo Find X3 Lite out of this box, take a full on tour of the hardware and the software, and for more, on the latest greatest tech please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell cheers all right let's check out what we got in the box it's one find x3 light natch oh nice i got the blue one you got your obligatory prophylactic case to keep the Apple find x3 light nice and safe pokey pin bit of type c usb charging cable action and holy moly one big fat mama of a super vook charger and hidden away at the very bottom, you even get a pair of earphones bundled in there as well. Proper ear scrapers, of course, but they'll be all right as a, uh, a bonus spare pair to shove in your bag or whatever. All right, so that's the box. Now let's check out the good stuff, the actual Oppo Find X3 Lite in all of its raw, naked glory. So yeah, naturally, you don't get that gorgeous glass unibody design of the Oppo Find X3 Pro here on the Lite model. But then, to be fair, for the cost of one Oppo Find X3 Pro, you can get three Oppo Find X3 Lites. It is sadly a plastic backing, which isn't great, considering it does cost almost 400 quid. There are plenty of glass offerings out there for that sort of price point. All the same, I do like the textured finish there, uh, so that means it's not going to pick up any nasty, greasy fingerprint scuffs or anything like that, unlike the Oppo Find X3 Pro. And another advantage of the plastic finish is that the Oppo Find X3 Lite only weighs 172 grams, so it is a proper featherweight as far as mid-rangers go. This is the astral blue version of the Find X3 Lite, but you can also grab it in starry black or galactic silver. Oppo really going balls deep with the space theme in there. And Oppo was very vague to say the least when it came to actually telling us what material materials the Find X3 Lite was constructed from, but I've heard that it's Gorilla Glass 5 up front and you do get a pre-installed screen protector as well to keep it extra safe. So let's get this Morpho booted up and then we can tour the rest of the device. Oh, and let's just check out what the SIM tray situation is as well before I forget. And it looks like you've got space for two SIMs in there, but no micro SD memory cards to expand the 128 gigs of storage. All right, so the Oppo Find X3 Lite is all set up and good to go. And I've done a fair bit of uh, extra play around in the background as well, because for instance, when you first set up the Find X3 Lite, you don't have the apps tray there, which is mildly irritating to say the least. I also got rid of all the uh, clutter that was there on the desktop and I changed the grid size and everything as well. So now it's closely resembling something that I would actually use full time. That said, I definitely have to get rid of these on-screen navigation buttons as well and go for the old swipe gesture support instead. There we go, much better. Okay, so what you get with the Oppo Find X3 Lite in terms of the software is the latest, freshest Android 11. But of course, as usual with Oppo smartphones, you get Color OS slathered on top of that, changing up the look and the vibe of it very much and adding a whole heap of bonus features on there. It's Color OS 11.1, so the latest version. And this launcher is very much love it or hate it. Thankfully, it is fairly sort of stock Android once you get it all set up. Like, so you've got the Google Discover feed, you can get your apps tray back, you've got the swipe down for notifications. But that settings menu, oh my God, this thing gives me nightmares. I wake up screaming in the middle of the night because of this thing. Like, and I'm not even kidding, it took me 15 minutes just to remember where the bloody navigations option was because it's buried away. I've, I've already forgotten where it is. It's in sods and convenience tools. That's where it is, right at the top there. Yeah, the layout is a total nightmare, but it does add some pretty good features. So for us, diving back into convenience tools, you do have some good uh, gesture and motion support. It likes to raise to wake, uh, swipe down with three fingers to take a screenshot. And also you do get more customization options compared with stock Android as well just dive on into the personalization section and you can fiddle around with the icon style i like a good bit of pebble action can of course change up the wallpapers and everything as usual you've got your always on display feature as well because this is an oled screen and you've got all kinds of random stuff that you can choose from here you can basically make it lots of colorful balls if that's your thing i mean i'm not entirely sure but i'm guessing some some pills or some some sort of illicit substances may have been involved in the creation of some of these you can play around with the fonts uh, you can even change up the uh, fingerprint sensor animation as well because it's an in-display fingerprint sensor and i'm definitely a fan of that color os edge lighting action as well very sexy so whenever you get a notification this will happen sploosh Plenty of other screen features as well, including a three-stage dark mode as well. Uh, let's just stick with the enhanced for now. As I briefly mentioned, you get an in-display fingerprint sensor just shunted away towards the bottom end of the screen there. So far, touch wood seems to be fairly sort of responsive. You know, not the fastest acting sensor around, uh, but touch wood hasn't failed me yet. 
And you've got some fierce and look action as well. So you can just tap that power button, it'll scan your mug as you can see, boom, straight in there. Uh, and you've got a good bit of rears to wake support if you want it too. So now let's check out that screen. And here on the Find X3 Lite, you get a 6.4 inch AMOLED panel with reasonably sort of skinny bezel, similar to that Samsung Galaxy A52 5G. Uh, Jesus Christ, <laughs> I thought that was something very different uh, at first. And so far, really loving the Fine X3 light display because it's AMOLED tech. You get nice, punchy, rich in your face colors, gorgeous stuff. Full HD plus resolution as well, 2400 by 1080 pixels. So everything looks nice and fine, whether you're browsing your photos, checking out a bit of Netflix or whatever. Uh, speaking of Netflix, there is HDR 10 plus support on here, but sadly, unfortunately, you don't seem to be able to stream HDR content via Netflix just yet. Hopefully that'll come in an update. And yeah, you do have a selfie cam orifice infiltrating on your view and pleasure when you go full of view, but it's kind of budged away in a corner, so it's barely even noticeable. If you jump on into the display settings, you've got kind of a limited control over uh, proceedings in here. You can, you know, mess around with the color temperature. You've got the likes of the eye comfort mode, which you can uh, schedule to turn on at night, just to make things a bit easier on the eye. The Aussie visual effect, which more often than not doesn't really seem to do anything. But you do get a 90 hertz screen refresh rate here on the Oppo Find X3 Lite. Uh, no dynamic option unfortunately so you'd see that 90 all the way or dial it back down to 60 to save on your battery life and if you bump that brightness all the way up like so uh, well it maxes out at around the 750 nits sort of mark so definitely not the brightest panel i've ever seen but should be okay for your outdoor visibility and unfortunately while a lot of the competition uh, around the oppo Find x3 light sort of pricing comes with a stereo speaker setup here on uh, this bad boy you've only got a mono speaker uh, housed down below let's bump up the volume see if it's at least any good now, I may look like the kind of old gear to be more comfortable pulling on some slippers and settling in for a nice long session of Monopoly than blasting people to shiny little giblets in some sort of violent online shooter. Well, it's not bad, to be fair. On that top volume, it certainly packs a bit of a punch. A little bit to me, you know, the clarity uh, is impacted on top volume slight distortion but otherwise okay but you know the main thing is that you've got that headphone jack down below so you can uh, slap in a pair of your favorite phones you've got a good bit of bluetooth 5 action on there as well and if you jump on into the audio settings you'll see you've got a good bit of dolby atmos tuning in there and that can just tweak your output to suit exactly what shenanigans you're up to now let's chat performance and the oppo Find x3 lite is powered by a snapdragon 765g chipset from qualcomm backed by a very healthy the 8 gigs of DDR4 RAM. And I've reviewed quite a few uh, Snapdragon 765G chipset smartphones in my time, including the likes of that Pixel 5 flagship phone. Absolutely flawless performance usually. Hopefully Color OS won't drag it down too much. Of course, one way to test that out is with a good bit of gaming action. So let's check out how Call of Duty Mobile plays on this Mofo. But as usual, of course, you do have the game space tools, uh, which should help out. So for instance, you've got touch optimization, where you can see exactly how touch sensitive the screen is. So I like to bump that right up. You got your game focus mode as well, which is another stunner, which just blocks all those pesky notifications that come flying in to uh, distract you from the task at hand, which is murdering everyone in sight. And yeah, unsurprisingly, Call of Duty Mobile ran pretty much without a hitch. There was a little bit of judder action right at the very start, which I've seen on a couple of other uh, mid-range smartphones recently, but the rest of the time, absolutely perfectly smooth. I felt that uh, the responsiveness of the screen was perfect as well. Gave me definitely a bit of a competitive edge, which is just as well, because I'm an alcoholic, old gear two's not very good at games. And because you've got that 765G chipset in there as well, that means you've got full 5G support, although it is just basic sub six, and it's Wi-Fi five, not six, uh, but that's kind of standard for this sort of price point. As for the battery tech, well, it's a 4,300 milliamp cell crammed into the Oppo Find X3 Lite. Should hopefully keep you going all day long. Usually these Oppo blows are fairly energy efficient, especially with that 765G chipset on there. I wouldn't have thought you'd have a problem. And when you do manage to completely drain that bad boy as well, well, you've got Super VOOC 2.0, 65 watt fast charging. So it'll be powered up in well under an hour. We're talking probably about half an hour or so. No wireless charging though, because of that placky backy. All right, so that's everything now, apart from the Oppo Find X3 Lite's quad lens rear camera. So let's check that out. And what you have here, like pretty much every other smartphone around this sort of price point, is a 64 megapixel primary shooter, though it does actually capture 16 megapixel images using a bit of four in one pixel binning. You've got all the usual camera features on here, including a bit of AI mode action. As you can see, AI scene enhancement. What this can do is it can boost colors to make them look more vibrant and vivid. And it can also recommend uh, particular camera modes to use for a given scenario. So for instance, 
ones here, it's recommending a bit of portrait action. You can just tap that to get rid of it if you don't want to do that. You got HDR, all that good stuff. You can swap to the 8 megapixel ultra wide angle lens with just a quick tap down here. And as you can see, this offers a very pulled out view of the action and touch wood, not too much distortion around the edges there, kind of similar to the Fine X3 Pro. You've also got a 2 megapixel monochrome lens if you fancy using the monochrome filters and a 2 megapixel macro lens if you want to get that shenanigans on the go. And plenty of other bonus camera features here on the Fine X3 Lite as well, including, of course, the ever dependable night mode, uh, which just helps to shoot a variety of shots at different exposure levels. You've got to keep your hand as steady as possible, unlike me. You've got that portrait mode, complete with all kinds of different uh, bokeh style background effects. Lots of jazzy numbers in there. And absolutely tons of extra camera features on top of that as well, including the extra HD mode, which just basically allows you to shoot at the full 64 megapixels. And for your home movie needs as well, you can shoot up to 4K resolution video. It's set to 1080p, 30 frames per second by default, but you can bump that up to 60 FPS if you like, otherwise that full 4K Ultra HD level. And last up, my favorite selfie cameras, and you've got a 32 megapixel shooter up front, uh, just as I say, wedged away in that corner there. Hopefully, you should be able to get some nice looking photos. You've got full portrait mode, smart. Uh, can you get night mode on the go? You can indeed. And uh, I mean, yeah, ugh. So that right there in a nutshell is the Oppo Find X3 Lite. And certainly if you don't mind a bit of color S action, it seems like a strong rival to the likes of the Galaxy A52 5G, which just emerged. Although it is still more pricey than Xiaomi's brilliant Mi 10T Lite. We do get that gorgeous OLED display, touch wood strong performance. Hopefully the battery life will be just as good. And I'll be hopefully testing out that camera tech for an in-depth review as well. Stay tuned. I've got so many phones. I'm absolutely almost literally drowning in the buggers. So it might take me a little while, but it'd be great to hear from you down in the comments below. Are you tempted by the Oppo Find X3 Lite? And if not, which rival smartphone turns you on more? Be great to hear from you. Please do plug subscribe and ding that notifications bell for more on the latest and greatest tech. And have yourselves a fan bloody tastic rest of the weekend. Cheers, everyone. Love you.